So until now what we did is just uh, in any program that we wrote until now we just declared a variable and then we initialized the variable and then we recently performed you know we recently learned how to perform arithmetic operator operations on those variables which we have already declared in our program but this will not be the case uh, for 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 every program that you will be writing because obviously uh, for any program that you will write uh, in the future or from now on will need to take an input from the user so that your program can actually process this input and it can produce the output it can do the functionality that it does that it is meant to do and then it produces the output so uh, for example um, let's just take an example let's say you are wanting to build a calculator so what would a calculator do first of all it takes the input from the user it takes uh, whether the user wants to uh, calculate the sum or the product or the subtraction I mean the difference or the div 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 division of a number so basically what we are taking here is user input we are taking two inputs here first of all we are taking numbers from the user and then we are also taking the operation to be performed for example we are taking either a plus or minus or a multiplication or a division and then we are taking numbers to uh, to which we want to perform those operations so this is called an e a user input and uh, until now we have uh, we have not seen anything about how to take input from the user and now in this video tutorial we will be seeing we'll be actually seeing how to take input from the user and this is one of this will be one of the most important tutorials of this whole video course because it's really important to know how to actually make your program take input from the user in an efficient way right so in this video obviously we'll be looking at how to take input in java and in the next video we'll be moving on to python so Taking input from the user, you can take input from the user in two ways. The first way is through the command line arguments, and the second way is during the runtime of a program. The runtime of a program is nothing but the time when a program is actually being run by your computer. So, first of all, we'll talk about the command command line input. So, how do you actually take input using the command line, and what exactly does this command line mean? So, basically, if you open your command prompt, uh, if you open your command prompt, so whenever you are compiling a program, uh, and when you are running a program, for example, let's say you have compiled your program and you're running it. So, how do you run your program? You say Java followed by the class name. I mean, the name of the dot class file. For example, let's say sample is the name of the class, and then uh, this is how you run it Java space the name of the class and uh, here uh, for command line arguments if you want to pass a command line argument into your program if your program is designed to take command line inputs uh, like from the user what you would do is after typing in Java space sample you type a space and here you start typing in your, in your arguments or your command line inputs right for example if you want to give a hello to the as the input to the program you just type in hello uh, hello right and then if you want to uh, also give another input uh, let's say you want to give world as the second input to the program you just type in space and you type in world right and if you want to give another input for example you want to give a number let's say three you space you type space and you put three so there are three inputs here first one is hello second one is world and the third one is three so this command line arguments uh, are actually separated by a space so that is what meant by a command line input so let's go ahead and uh, let's see how to actually make your program uh, take these command line arguments so this is the uh, template that we'll be using obviously and uh, I want you to concentrate in this video uh, about this part over here uh, this what is this actually this is actually the parameter for the method main this is the this is the method where actually the execution of the program begins right so string args is actually the parameters uh, parameter actually this is this one parameter that we are actually passing you know to this main method and you can notice uh, unlike any other variables which we have created uh, 
uh, this variable has an open and closed square braces like this. I mean, for sure we can understand this that this is a string uh, data type variable because we are we can see string is the data type used here, and then ARGS is obviously the name of the variable. But what is this open and cl uh, closed square braces after this variable name? Well, this open and closed square braces represents or indicates that this variable ARGS is actually an array. So yeah, I've we have not actually spoken about arrays until now, and we will not be talking much about arrays in this video because uh, there is there is going to be a separate video video tutorial or a section uh, explaining about arrays. But for now, I just want you to understand or I just want you to imagine or think an array as a set or a list of things. Like remember when I told you when I was teaching about strings, I told you that a string is nothing but a set of characters or a list of characters or a sequence of characters together, right? In the same way, I want you to think an array is nothing but a set of elements. It, it might be a character, it might be numbers, whatever it is, it's just a set of uh, elements. And all these elements, uh, which I am indicating as a set, should be of the same data type. For example, if one of the element in the in, the, in in this list is a character then all the others must be a character or if one of these in in the list is a number with no decimal point which means that means that all the other things in the list should also be a, uh, uh, a number with no decimal points in or in other words an integer data type right so that is uh, what is actually meant by an array so we are going to talk about this ARGS uh, ARGS uh, parameter that is being passed as an input to the main method. So this ARGS is actually the command line arguments. So ARGS obviously stands for arguments and uh, uh, whenever you're passing or whenever the user is passing command line arguments to your program, they get stored in this ARGS uh, uh, variable, right? It's, it's nothing but an array variable, right? So that's how the command line arguments are taken. So you don't have to do anything externally. The command line arguments will automatically get saved in this ARGS followed by open and closed uh, square brackets. And if you try removing this string ARGS from the parameters uh, section, you will obviously face an error because uh, uh, Java actually requires you to put this string ARGS because uh, you know that's how it works. So. Now let's go ahead and let's see how we can actually take input. So there's actually nothing else we need to do. Uh, you just have to type in string ARGS in the parameter section and you're done. So now in order to actually treat the input, uh, what you need to do is uh, let me declare a vari uh, variable, a string variable. Let me say string INP1, INP1 equal to. And uh, in order to treat the command line arguments, you have to obviously, uh, as I told you, they are stored in this ARGS variable. So I'll say ARGS open and close braces. And inside this open and close braces, you have to type in a number. You have to type the index of the command line argument. So uh, if you type in zero, zero is nothing but one. Well, in programming, we do not count from one, but we start counting from zero. So whenever you're actually, you know, doing stuff with numbers, you should always keep it in your mind that we should count from zero and not from one when it comes to programming in any programming language. So I said string INP1 is equal to ARGS of zero. So what I'm basically doing here is I'm actually getting the first element or the first value or inside this ARGS uh, array and I'm storing it in the variable INP1 which is of string data types. So you can see that there is no mismatch of data types also because ARGS is also a string data type you can see and INP1 is also a string data type. So there's no mis mismatch of data or possible lossy type of conversion on all that stuff. You're not going to get any error, that's what I mean, right? So string in INP1 is equal to ARGS of zero. What it does is obviously I told you, it uh, takes the first element or the f basically the first command line input and it uh, stores it in an INP1. In the same way, let's go ahead and do uh, another thing like uh, similarly, let's say string INP2. And in this case, we have to get the next input, the second command line input. And in order to get the second command line input, what should be the number here? Well, what comes after zero? That's right, we have to type in one. So uh, what we have just done is we have uh, we are treating the first two command line input inputs uh, like this using the, you know, ARGS array. So you can treat as many inputs as you want 
right so for now let's actually go ahead and print out these inputs so i'll say system out print ln i'll say your uh, first input is and then i'll print out the um, by the way if you want to print out uh, more than two values in a system out print ln thing obviously you'll use a plus operator to print it out so for example i'm printing this string value which is your first input it input is and then i want i want to append the value of inp1 to this first uh, value that i'm that i've given in the system out print ln statement so i'll use a plus and i'll say inp1 so basically i'm appending these two these two values and i'm printing it to the output so that's what i'm doing and uh, the same way i'll also print out the second input i'll say your second input is i'll say inp2 great so now let's go ahead and run our program so i've ac actually already created a folder which says taking input so let me browse to this folder it's dir okay right so this is the file that i've just written command line.java so i'm going to compile that file over there and i'll say java c command line input dot java right so seems like there are no compilation errors so let me go ahead and actually run this program i'll say java space the name of the class which is uh, command line input and then i've told you what if you want to pass command line arguments to the program all you need to do is after typing in this java space the name of the class you have to type in another space and you're, now you can start typing your uh, arguments so for example let's say uh, the first argument i would like uh, to pass to the program is the string hello so i'll say hello and then space i will say world so my first argument over here on my first command line input is hello and the second command line input is world so let's go ahead and hit enter um, there we go it says your first input is hello so it obviously is able to treat hello as the first input and it says second input is world so it took this as a second input just the way we want things to work right so in the same way you if you want to add a third you know command line argument you can say string uh, another another variable you can declare like that string inp3 and you just say two so if you want to take the third command line input, you just type in ARGS of two. And in the same way, you can you can treat that variable as well, separately or the way you wish, right? So that's how you actually take uh, inputs from uh, using the command line arguments method. And uh, obviously, if you, obviously you can see that uh, this ARGS array is a string data type array. So that means the command line arguments that you're going to pass to your program should uh, will always be taken as a string so no matter if you're submitting a number in this command line arguments they will always be uh, taken as a string but later you can come ahead and uh, convert these into an integer for example let's say let's say i want to you know i don't know add two numbers right add two numbers so i'll have two command line inputs the first number let's say the first number is inp1 and the second number is inp2 so they are being treated as strings so obviously if we add a string let's say let's say we have i don't know let's say we have uh, four as a string and let's say we also have uh, two as a string right so if you actually add these two values so for example inp1 is 4 and inp2 uh, is 2 and both these are obviously string data types as you can say by the double quotes right so if you want to if you are writing a program to add these two numbers which which are taken as input through the command line arguments and if you directly without converting it into an integer add these two just like that what would be the output it will not be 6 but it will be 42 because that's how strings are appended this is a string not an integer so when you are adding two strings they are just going to be appended right so this thing is going to get appended to this which means it's going to be added to the end of this string that's it so that's why you will have 42 so obviously we don't want that to happen so what we'll be doing is we will uh, be actually converting uh, this string into an integer so in order to convert it into an integer you know let's say int a is the first number and in order to convert inp1 which is a string data type into an integer data type all you need to, all you need to do is actually uh, use the function integer dot parse int and uh, open and close parenthesis and inside this open and close parenthesis you need to type in the inp 
one which is basically uh, we are actually sending INP one as the parameter to this function parsint. So integer is basically the class for the integer data type that we are using and this is obviously predefined it comes predefined in Java and parsint is actually the function which is defined in integer class and this is used to actually convert a given value into an integer data type value and uh, what we are doing here you obviously know we are passing a parameter to the function parsint so basically it's going to take this value which is which we are passing as a parameter and it's going to convert it into an integer in the same way let's do the same for the second number as well uh, I'll say int b equal to uh, integer dot int inp INP2 this time right so let's change this to b right so now we have successfully converted things into uh, into an integer data type uh, data type and then uh, let's go ahead and print out these things so instead of INP1 I'll print A and instead of INP2 I'll print out B so let's go ahead and check this out so let me compile the program and now um, instead of uh, giving a string value obviously I want to give a uh, uh, integer data type value so that's why I've done all those conversion and stuff so let's give 4 space 2 so I'm giving 4 as the first input and 2 as the second input let me hit enter and there we go your first input is 4 and the second input is 2 we have successfully converted a string into an integer so in the same way if you want to convert it into a double you just uh, replace int with double here you just use parse uh, double and obviously while doing that you want to make sure that your data type is actually double so in that way you can actually convert a string into an integer uh, if you're taking inputs from a command line because command line always treats the input as a string so yeah so that's all about command line inputs and uh, in the next video we will be talking about how to take inputs during the runtime of a program